Kabam! It's go time, Chuck. So we're going to dig back in, talk about two variables here, everybody. We're going to talk about, hey, you hit a plateau. Now what? Or you didn't hit a plateau. You're kind of transitioning into this maintenance stage. You hit your goal. Booyah. Awesome job. But again, now what? Um, I think the most common one, Chuck, is going to be hitting a plateau, right? So I figured we'll dive into that. What do you think? This guy just hit a plateau and he's, he's here. He's stuck. So plateaus, how do we address them and what do we do with them? So most common thing when we hit a plateau is we haven't updated where we're at. So in other words, what do you mean? Uh, so if I'm using like a calorie counter or something when it comes to nutrition, my caloric intake is not going to stay the same once I've hit my goal. So we have to update where we're at with our lean body mass, with our body fat percentage, with our current weight. And then if then it goes into a maintenance mode. So let's talk about like hitting that plateau. If we've gotten to a certain point, but let's say we haven't gotten over that hump and we've got like five more pounds to go, we have to adjust where we're at and then adjust our caloric intake based upon where our where we're at currently with our program to then get over that hump. So like for me in particular, I just, we talked about this liver cleanse that I just did. So it's been like a good solid three weeks of clean eating the entire three weeks. And guess what happened during that three weeks? I actually gained four pounds. Putting on muscle. <laughs> hey, we, we bulked up a little bit. I gained four pounds. But because like some of the stuff that I was taking when I was doing this liver cleanse, something like celiac husk, it's causing me to maintain uh, and, and hold on to more water weight. Um, so that's probably why I gained four pounds. But now because I've gained that four pounds, I now have to go and I have to adjust my macronutrients because I want to ultimately lose another 15 pounds summertime ready. We get a little bit of this going on. Uh, but ultimately I want to I want to decrease my body fat. So I need to adjust where I'm at. So I need to adjust my macros to get over that plateau to then get over that final hump to reach my goal. Boom. Exactly. So being able to make those minor adjustments and that's why having a coach or having someone else there, that additional support can go such a long way. And even for those that are going without it and you're like, Hey, you know what? I can make those adjustments on my own, understanding what you're looking for from those adjustments, like you talked about, Chuck, and it's being in mind of the goal. So for example, when we hit a plateau of, let's say we're a hard gainer, I'm trying to put on 20 pounds this year of muscle or as much muscle as possible. And right. I'm peaking or not peaking, I'm plateauing at the halfway mark. I'm stuck at 10 pounds and nothing else is coming on. The adjustments we make there with our macros and with our calories is going to look different than Again, getting 15 pounds off or leaning body fat percentage, yeah. or for me, it's kind of almost still lowering body composition, but actually the biggest thing for me where I've hit a plateau is my sleep pattern, which is kind of a different plateau. Yeah, it's a it's big more one too. A process oriented plateau almost where like I've gotten some sleep, but I haven't continued to make any maintenance there. So anyways, I, we won't diverge into that too much, but knowing again, what the goal is for our plateau. And then ultimately you touched on this really, that's I think important. Again, I'm going to use my expression here. We're going to unpack of- I thought you were going to say 100%. 100%. Sorry. That's, that's my 100 percent or one. But also the unpacking, we're going to unpack stuff because I like unpacking stuff apparently, of with keeping in mind body composition itself. So if you are, again, it, it, let's just take, again, we want to lose weight and we have a 2000 calorie intake. That's going to put us still at a calorie deficit, a minor calorie deficit while maintaining our muscle tissue. We're going to keep progressively coming down to a certain extent. And then if we do hit that plateau, we have to account for the still muscle we want to maintain, but the results we want to find and saying, Hey, maybe we actually don't because this is also the other trick, right, Chuck? And we can maybe dig into this a bit is if we keep shaving off hundred, 200 calories, eventually we're going to hit this threshold where that we're not getting a return on our investment. We're actually hurting our metabolism. Right. And that's going to cause our goals to go further out because we're now hurting our metabolism. We need to make those micro adjustments in our diet, in our nutrition to make sure that number one, we're supporting our body function. Uh, but before we get into this, I want to talk real quick, briefly. Uh, I want to unpack something. 
see what you did. Let's talk about body composition real quick. Ooh, yes. Because not a lot of people understand what we're talking about. And just to dive deep into body comp, it's not just getting on a scale and looking at a number and, and, and kind of figuring out where we are or where we need to go. We need to dive deeper into overall body composition, looking at our lean body mass and looking at our body fat percentage. Because ultimately, yeah, the scale, the number on the scale, it means something, but is it as important as lean body mass or overall body fat? In my opinion, no. Everywhere you go, you go to a regular doctor. I step on a scale right now, it's going to say I'm 226 pounds. I float between that, you know, 221, 226. You're obese. If I go to a, re if I go, yeah, thanks, Mike. But if I go to a regular doctor, that doctor is going to tell me based upon my body mass index, I'm overweight. I'm obese. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm 15, 16 percent body fat. So for a 46 year old male who's 226 pounds, on a doctor's scale, that's going to say you're obese. You need to lose weight. But the doctors aren't looking at body fat percentage or lean body mass. Those two numbers are crucial to where your ultimate goal is. So when we talk about body composition, that's what we're talking about, how well your body is composed based upon lean body mass structure and body fat percentage. 100%, Chuck. And I think this is a good point. Like, again, there unpacking. 100%. See, I, work, I get to work them both in, 100% and unpacking. That was just not even on purpose. That just happened. Of being able to understand that body composition difference and the impact it has on calorie burn. So for example, right. Chuck, your body composition at, let's say 220 pounds, just for even math versus body composition at 200 pounds. And let's say you lose 20 pounds, but you lose 20 pounds of muscle. Let's call it 10 pounds of muscle, 10 pounds of fat, just for just argument's sake with the sake of, sure. I just want to lose weight. The downside to doing that, there's there's different maybe reasons for doing it. The downside, if that does happen, is now you took 10 pounds off your frame, but it's not necessarily burning as many calories because that's its engine source for those calories, Sure, your brain, but also your muscles. So if you don't have that same amount or that same type of body composition, your calories won't just have to adjust, your macros will adjust, but the amount overall that you can take in will has to adjust because the lack of muscle that you have or the loss of muscle that you saw. Sure. And of course, it's got to be a realistic goal as well. So if, you know, somebody's got an idea is, okay, so Chuck, you, you're walking around at 226. You just said, let's call it 220 for whatever purpose. If my goal is to lose 20 pounds, right? Is that feasible to do? But if my lean body mass is 196 pounds of lean body mass, which is what I'm walking around with my lean body mass, to get down to 200 pounds, right? If I want to lose 20 it's impossible to do because you're going below that 3% body fat margin, which is unhealthy to go. Don't go below three to 4% because then your, your, your organ functions start to fail. I would never suggest somebody to go below 3% body fat, but this is where that body composition comes into play and the education behind body composition. And then there's this, I think what's interesting to bring up at this point is this idea of like a natural set point that we all can potentially have. And that natural set point, the theory behind it is we all have a weight that our body is going to want to naturally gravitate towards and a body composition that our body's naturally going to want to gravitate towards. And we can, usually you can see it when you're a young kid or when you're not particularly focused on any one goal, what does your body naturally want to lean towards? And that's maybe using our body type, like endomorph, ectomorph mesomorph as a framework because chuck naturally you can tell you're a strong muscular guy and your body's going to lean towards that so if we're saying your natural set point is probably going to be closer to where you're at and then fighting like you said losing an additional 20 pounds you just don't have it to lose right. but also at the same point let's say you wanted to gain i don't know i'm going to make up another another 20 pounds of muscle that may also not be what your natural set point is going to be. And acknowledging that, because a lot of times when people hit these plateaus, it may be a part of, hey, now it may be time where this might be a maintenance time for a bit because your body hit a so, natural potential set point. And it's always good, in my opinion, once you've hit that plateau, once you've identified that I've hit a plateau and maybe my goal isn't a realistic goal to then shift into a maintenance type of mode or, or, or like how we talk in like a, a strength and conditioning world, a decompress, a deload type of workout plan. It's the same thing when it comes to nutrition to deload what we've been doing and to go more into a maintenance type of function where we now are really not 
trying to focus on losing or gaining. We just want to maintain what we're doing. And what do we mean by maintaining? We, we look at all of the positive things that we've done throughout our program and we focus in on those. So if it's, you know, we've done a good job with uh, meal prepping and we're eating clean and we may go out once, maybe twice a week and have a cheap meal, not a cheap day, a cheap meal. We want to maintain those type of things throughout our plan so we can deload, work on our maintenance, continue to work on our maintenance. And then when we finished, we feel good, we feel great. Now the next goal comes into play. So I would suggest maybe three to four weeks of like a maintenance plan. And then from there, we work on the next goal that we want to hit into. Yeah. And I think this can be a nice like segue getting into the maintenance. The one thing I wanted to kind of, again, dig into here a little bit, unpack maybe a hundred percent of it is, <laughs> is that idea of basically looking at what are some of the habits and choices that got us to this point and using it as an opportunity to reflect on, Hey, maybe did I start slacking with going out when right. I'm going out on the weekends? Am I having a couple more drinks? Am I eating a little bit more? Is there a window of opportunity to re-explore some of those habits and behavior patterns? Right. Or is it truly time I have to look at is my body composition or my weight at a natural set point. And now we transition to this maintenance phase decompressing, deloading, getting to maybe some more intuitive eating, some mindful eating where we're not counting as much to see yeah. what that brings up. Well, it, it's all, like you just said, mindful, mindfulness. So when we're doing this maintenance cycle, if we notice, you're like, you know, man, the, the I'm not feeling as great. What? A, let's clue in on what I did. Oh, I'm taking in more carbs or I'm, I notice I'm eating more gluten in, in things that I'm normally not doing. Um, or maybe my fat went up. Maybe I'm just having way too much peanut butter and, and stuff. And maybe my fat is going up. These are what we're talking about when we're in this maintenance cycle. We have to notice these little adjustments that we've made that has, uh, we call them micro adjustments, uh, that has a, a, a counteract with how our body feels. So we have to be mindful of that when we're in this maintenance function. And this is where I think being 100%, able- 100%. 100%, Chuck. Uh, yeah, 100%. This is where I think <laughs> being able to, I was going to just try and add this. I was waiting for it, Mike. I was totally waiting for it. <laughs> it's all about the suspense, suspense build. And that's where I think being able to either leverage with your coach documentation or on your own journey, whether it's journaling, using an app, having notes, something like that, being able to reference back. Because guess what? If you can't remember what you had for breakfast last Tuesday, I know I can't. Being able to think about what you were doing three weeks ago and the habits you were fulfilling could be hard to exactly yeah. remember. So being able to, that's why even leveraging our 28 day challenge, we know what week one looks like. We know what week two looks like week three and week four. So being able to track that becomes a lot easier, but when you're starting to maybe shift in that focus and you're not tracking what's going on, it can be a lot harder when you do hit that plateau as well. You're like, well, I don't right. even know what was working. Yeah. And that's why like every, when I go into a program and I, 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 I base what I need. And again, I'm seasonal the way I like to do things. I like to do that 28 day challenge every three months. Am I saying it's necessary to do every three months? No, I like to do it because I really focus on a goal for a few weeks and I'm including like just three weeks of this liver cleanse, which was brutal. Now I'm coming off of that. Now I'm going into a maintenance cycle. Now, when I want to come off of that maintenance cycle, again, we're going on our anniversary trip come in July. So I'd say probably within the next two weeks, I'm going to come out of this maintenance cycle and I'm probably going to do the 28 day challenge again to kickstart my system to really reset it, reset my gut biome, make, you know, make my body feel like I'm getting ready to gear up to do, to, to do this work. And then I'm going to go hundred percent clean until we go away for our trip. You know, again, I, I, I'm the way I am. It's just the way I'm wired. I'm not saying it's for everybody, but working with a coach can clue in what your specific goals are and what your needs are and how we're going to path that out for you. Uh, and again, is working with a coach good for everybody? No, but it's going to help you along the way. My, I live by the motto, everyone needs a coach. Every coach needs a coach. Everybody needs a coach just to help you guide along the way. There's too much misinformation out there on social media. People go on Google, oh, what's the best way to diet right now? And there's a million things that populate up. I'm not a real big fan of all the fad diets. I like the science behind what, what we're doing because it works. And, and again, 100%. <laughs> 
of the time, a hundred percent of the time, it works every time. Right? Yeah, exactly. But, and that's the bigger piece that jumps out to me that we've done podcasts on is like debunking again, diets. You guys can check the links below for that and, and look into our prior episodes, but being able to, again, have the approach fit your lifestyle, fit what works for you and yeah. not just saying, Oh, well, keto's shown i'm just making up some some information here keto statistically has been shown to have the greatest weight loss in the first 12 weeks okay that's great i don't even know if that's true i'm just making this up but if that's a, you'll see a lot of claims like that and is it sustainable does it work for your lifestyle does it actually have foods that you enjoy does it can do is it conducive to the training that you like into the what you want to see from your performance side all these variables are things to be considered so even going back to now like when we really look at the maintenance side of things as well i also think of it as an opportunity not only to decompress to take some of the shift off and the pressure off to having to see results every week but it's also i think a time to experiment to be able to see hey even when we talk about our 28 day approach whether it's you know 90 percent focus dialed in eating 80%, 100%, being able to experiment. Hey, can I get 80% styled eating, at least for our guidelines? If you guys are unsure what that is, check the link below. We'll have a link to our nutrition guidelines and some details on that. Or you could just check out the, the 28 day nutrition reset, but being able to understand and experiment, and it doesn't even have to be 80% eating to 20% going off from our guidelines. It could be, Hey, I want to see what adding in, you name it, does to my body or taking right. it out. And just, you know, points of reference, there's certain things that, you know, I've done and I've tried everything. And Michael B. contested this. I've done every diet to test it out, pretty much everything. Uh, I've done MRT test, which is a food sensitivity test. I've spent the money, I've invested in it to find out what foods uh, have inflammation causes on my body. I've done so many different types of things. And then I played around with it over the past couple of weeks to say, let's take out dairy. Let's see how dairy is going to affect me. And you, and you can play around with this with your diet as well. Clue in on the things that you feel like when you eat it, it your body has a negative effect to it. Do I feel bloated afterwards? Am I gassy afterwards? These are the type of things to be mindful of when you are focusing in on your diet. So with me, I tried to strip out as much dairy as possible. You know, I started putting oat milk in my coffee in the morning. Mm. It's not as creamy. It's not as delicious. But you know what? I'm not as bloated anymore. I tried to take out all cheeses, everything out of my diet that I knew was going to have an effect on me. This is something that you could be mindful of when you're paying attention to your diet. And again, everybody is different. Mike's food sensitivities are completely different from my, my food sensitivities. And the people that are listening to this, your food sensitivities are different as well. So you have to be mindful of it when you're taking in this food to pay attention to how your body is reacting to it. A hundred percent. I just have to <laughs> have to agree. But in all seriousness, that's where I think it's also an opportunity, whether we look at the plateauing side, looking at the maintenance side, being able to reflect upon those choices and being aware of how your body responds. And if you guys, and I know a lot of you might be thinking, well, I don't even know, like, all right, I don't know what bloated feels like, or I start to get in tune with your body, whether you have to start writing it down and creating a checklist or starting to just think about those things and creating that connection yeah. and being able to say from bloated, from GI distress, from your energy, do you want to take a nap right after you eat? Do you actually feel energized to want to go work out or what's going on there? In addition to that, also being aware of kind of with the experimental side of what do I want to see happen? And don't try and change too many things all at once because that's where you cannot see the effectiveness. And I guess the last one thing I kind of wanted to add in before I, then I figured we could recap the takeaways for everyone here before we bring it home is whether you're plateauing or in a maintenance stage, I find it a great opportunity again, to be able to like, again, we're going to, I'm going to use this mangoes and chocolate analogy of, and Chuck, we've talked Here about we this. Here we go. Mangoes and chocolate all the time with you. And, and the chocolate Mike. and the mangoes. mangoes and <laughs> so this is where I've started to now, we got our dehydrator. I haven't actually dehydrated the mangoes yet. We've tried other things. You're, like making, your own, and bananas. you're making your own mangoes now. I'm making my own mangoes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to now take control of the process, have it as minimally processed yeah. as possible, my dehydrate God. them myself, add in my own protein. And then now I've already started making my own chocolate oat protein banana muffins, which are 160 calories per serving with 10 grams to potentially 15 grams of protein, depending on how much protein you want to go in. 
Um, and finding things like that, because instead of me going to the store, buying mangoes and buying Reese's, I can have control over it. And that's usually what's going to be a part of a plateau when you're, when you're not kind of in control of those choices and leveraging on too much processed foods or other items like that. Right. Well, that, that boils into as well. If I've hit a plateau in what I'm doing, let's take a look at what I'm eating. Am I eating organic meats? No. Well, let's give it a try. Am I eating, you know, grass fed organic meats? Am I doing as, as much as I can to, to remove the processed element out of what I'm eating? Uh, and great. If, listen, if you don't need that, if you haven't plateaued and you hit your goal, great. Now let's look at that maintenance cycle of it and see what the next phase of it is. Because ultimately in that next phase of where you want to be, that could be that that gets you over that hump. We eat organic and grass fed in here all the time. You got to remember when you go out to a restaurant, you can't control those ingredients as to what you're doing. But again, to Mike's dehydrated mangoes, the things that you can control in your home are going to help you make those micro adjustments to help you either maintain or get over those plateaus. So let's kind of recap for everybody. Cause I know we, we touched on a lot of, you know, I think helpful. A hundred percent, Chuck. That was good. That was hundred awesome. percent. <laughs> didn't you, didn't you read my mind? I was thinking, I, was, it I felt it. I felt it coming, but I just needed that confirmation of 100%, I'll give you that Chuck. positive reinforcement. hundred <laughs> percent. Um, so yeah. So being able to let's let's kind of recap here from a plateau perspective so we talked about it's an opportunity truthfully to reflect on a few variables one are you at your potential natural set point and then we have to explore some adjustments they may come from that like for the weight and the body composition you're at is it realistic to continue or do we is and it may be realistic to continue but then you have to level up the intensity at which you're approaching it and then you have to ask yourself that question do i really want to level up the intensity and if says okay cool we make those adjustments Now, the other piece to it is being able to, like you said, Chuck, okay, now we use it as an opportunity to let's see what maintenance does for our body, decompress a little bit, and then see, hey, now once I've had some time to reevaluate, gave my body a little bit of a break, and I go back, these changes, your body's going to be more sensitive to the change because it hasn't kind of, again, had these adaptation response mechanisms in place. And when we have change, and then the body responds to that change, adjusts, and then we have more change on top of that, you start to see more results. And then one thing I figured we didn't talk about that I want to sneak in here that's really important and we've talked about in the past is when you are plateauing, look at your sleep. I mean, I mentioned it. I know I talked about that's an issue for me, process behavior, but I think the sleep component is another variable where we're more than likely going to, and when I say more than likely, people like maybe me and you and a lot of the followers that are here can relate to this is overtraining, under recovering, as far as not being able to sleep enough, not fueling our body with the right foods, and then just trying to smash into a wall saying, Hey, I want to have more food. I'm going to go work out more. And that's going to be a law of diminishing returns eventually. Right. Well, those are two big components that you talked about the overtraining aspect and the recovery aspect. People don't understand that those have, those are two big components to why you're not hitting your goal. Ultimately, overtraining can have an adverse effect on your body where you think you're training, 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 and ultimately you're overworking your body to the point when when you are training, you're not getting anything out of it because you're overtraining. And then the recovery side of things, if you're not sleeping and recovering enough and you have that element of your training or overtraining, your body's just given up on you. Your body's just overworked. It's not going to, you're not going to reach your goals. It's not going to get to that level of where you need to be. Your body needs time to relax and recover in order for you to get to that next phase. Things like meditation, uh, sitting in a sauna, uh, box breathing. You touched on box breathing this this week, Mike. Uh, you know these are great things to do. Even if you get in the shower, take a hot shower, and focus on your breathing just to try to decompress before you go to bed will help you do these little micro adjustments in your system to help you relax and recover, but concentrate on how much training I'm doing because a rest day is good. I'm taking a rest day today. There is such a thing as a rest day. Yay, we're taking a rest day. Um, 100%. Yeah, 100%. There is such a thing as a rest day. You get some of these people that are just addicted to the gym. I'm one of them. It's hard to take a rest day. Yeah, Mike, raise your hand too. It's hard to take a rest day, but your body needs it. So you got to pay attention to that. Once again, 100%, Chuck. That's exactly where it fits in. 100%, Mike. Oh, there we go. We got the smooth listenings of <laughs> Chuck and Mike in the morning. Um, so that's, again, to, to recap those, again, guys, look at your, your potential natural set point, make some reflections there. 
from the plateau side of things, look at the choices you've been making. What might have changed that could be contributing to this plateau? And if there's nothing you can come up with, always look at sleep, look at your recovery. And then even still, if there's nothing you can see, no problem working to a maintenance phase for a little bit, giving your body a break. And then even if on the other side of the maintenance phase, if you've hit your goal and you're wondering what to do for that maintenance piece, use everything we just talked about from being able to just have some intuitive, mindful eating, giving your body a little bit of a break, being experimental with what you can and cannot get away with and what your body does and does not respond to, and then be able to document all of it. And between, again, hitting a plateau or having maintenance, these are all actionable things that you can do starting right now. It's just a matter of, are you going to do it? That's the commitment. What's your level of commitment to getting you to reach those goals? Boom, Chuck, 100%. That's the finish. I got it. I got I got multiple 100% this time, Mike. Uh, well deserved, too. We my got average right now. You know what my average is right now? It's 100%. 100%. <laughs> you'd be in the Hall of Fame if we were playing baseball right now because you'd be batting 1,000. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all. So that's how we're going to wrap it up. Before we go, though, we're going to remind you again, all the awesome information we talked about, different links we referenced are below in the description. You can check out, we have our booty builder that's live right now that for our workout series, we have our 28 day nutrition reset. And as well as all of our amazing coaching courses, programs, we're actually going to be experimenting again with some maybe accountability programs coming out and some opportunities there. So, and oh, the PDF resource. Specialized program specialized programs. We'll do that for you as well. If you want a one-on-one coach with either me or Mike over there, we'll do that for you as well. Just let us know what you need. We got your back. Boom. And then the best part is this is the one I wanted to lay on you guys that you probably have seen it at this point is we have now with every episode, a free PDF, drop in your email. We'll send it over to you. This one's going to specifically talk about motivation, maintenance, and plateaus and discuss some of the variables that we dug into here. So Enjoy that, y'all. We'll check you guys later. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Take care.